All right, I just went ahead and chose section 6.5, number 13. Uh, but more importantly, it's number uh, 22 in the book. Um, it's an example comparative to, to number 22. And here's the animation that goes along with it. It's a good animation. In fact, we should be watching all of the animations that go with these. And those are found in the multimedia library or in the actual homework sections, as you see here. Now, I, I picked this one not only because it, it had a partial mistake, but because it was like um, it was like the one that was most missed last year in this homework set, the most missed question from section six five. So before every fight, before every flight, the pilot must verify the total weight of the load. Uh, that it is less than the maximum allowable load for the aircraft. The aircraft can carry 40 passengers, and a flight has fuel bag, fuel and baggage of, that allows for a total passengers load of 6,560 pounds. The pilot sees the plane is full and all the passengers are men. The aircraft will be overloaded if the mean weight, the average weight of the passengers is greater than 164 pounds. Now the reason why they, they um, say 164 pounds is because if you took the 6,560 and divided by 40 men or 40 passengers, uh, that would be 164 pounds. So they're, they're actually kind of, it might, might look a little interruptive that they put it in an equation form, but um, they have this expression to kind of remind you where they're coming up with this benchmark of 164. It's similar to the elevator problem. If you haven't already done that, uh, you'll see it where you know there maybe they can only fit uh, 400 pounds and um, you know five people are getting in an elevator and, and they had to consider what the average weight was so anyway what's the probability that the aircraft is overloaded that's the first question we need to answer should the pilot take any action to correct for an overloaded aircraft assume that weights of men are normally distributed see they're trying to make it easy for us so we can only consider one gender just all passengers being men Although that's probably unlikely, except for maybe if this is like some sort of a special forces operation and they just don't have any of the women special forces going with them that day. I don't know. So um, they're trying to make it easy. They want to have one distribution to consider, and its mean is 174.2 pounds. That's not looking good right now. Um, and its standard deviation is 35.5. So it doesn't look like we're going to fit a lot, but uh, let's run the calculation and see what happens. Okay, I've already got uh, the correct answer here, but let me show you what how I accomplished that. I'll be using StatCrunch, so let me open up. <clears throat> and actually, I'll draw a picture as I describe the event here. So we aren't asking the question, what's the probability that a man weighs um, above 164 pounds? We're asking, what's the probability that the mean weight of 40 passengers, 40 men in this case, is above 164 pounds? So we're not looking at a, a normal distribution um, in the usual sense. I, got, I think that's fair to say. Um, we're looking at a normal distribution where instead of this being just regular x uh, points, as, as they're labeled here, x, these are going to be actually x bars, but I can't change the screen. It, the screen is what it is, just like it says f of x when really I wish it would say p of x, but that's another story. So you got to keep in mind that this is not a distribution where down here is um, our x's. If it were, the calculation would run like this. We would use the mean of that set, the mean of men's weights, 174. And the standard deviation, and use our cutoff value of 164, and we're trying to find out if we go above it. So that is the percentage to um, uh, the the probability of picking a man that weighs above 164 pounds from this distribution of men's weights, 61%. Now that's not us. In fact, we know it should be um, let's see, bigger than that because the distribution should be taller so right now the distribution is using this as the standard deviation but if we're talking about um, sampling distribution of sample means 
where you're taking all the means from samples of size 40, every possible mean. So you, you imagine like what we did in section 6.4 when we found sampling distributions, but we did simple things like n is size 2 or n is size 3 or whatever. And we had to find every possibility of n equaling 2. And so sometimes that was 9 uh, if there were only three population values, and sometimes there was way more. So we're going to imagine um, taking all the possibilities here when n is 40. Now, it is important that n is 40, that it's above 30, because the requirements for the, well, you know, let me just show you that. Let me show you the requirements for the central limit theorem, which is what we're actually applying here. All right, they are that we're dealing with a random uh, probability distribution, right? Random variable x. And um, it may or may not be normal with a mean of mu and a standard deviation of sigma. So, you know, that's what we had from our distribution of, of men's weights, right? Mu was 174.2, sigma was 35.5. And then you do simple random samples um, of size n, where Rn is 40, because that's what we're considering, this average weight of 40. And so we would have, have had to take every possible um, sample of size 40, which we aren't going to be able to do it. But it doesn't matter, because if we have these given requirements, then the conclusion is that the distribution of the means, so imagine you take 40, drop a mean down, take 40, and that's a number, drop another mean, and then again, and again, and again, and again, that will, um, as the sample size increases, will approach a normal distribution. The mean of the sample distributions is going to be the population mean, and the standard deviation of all those sample means is going to be close, or not close, I shouldn't say that because it implies too much, it's going to be predictable that it'll be the standard deviation divided by the square root of n. So let me um, give you the requirements or the, the practical use. If the sample size is larger than 30 like ours, we're okay. Just play that game. And I'll show you the slide to restate what it already said. If the original population is not normally distributed, then we have to have a sample size where n is big enough, big enough being uh, greater than 30. Okay, And then it doesn't matter um, if the original population is normally distributed. So here's what we're saying. This is the um, mean of the sampling distribution of sample means. Remember how set x bar is the notation for a sample mean? So imagine you take a sample mean, mark that number, and our sampling size in this in our example is 40, but it's generally speaking m. Mark that, mark again, mark again, mark again. Take all possible um, samples of size 40 from your population and then run the mean of that probability distribution created, like we did in section 6.4, and that would be mu. So do a similar, take that similar distribution, find its standard deviation. That's equal to this population standard deviation divided by the square root of n. So since we have these values, we can figure out these results, right? Even though we don't actually have those. Kind of cool. In fact, let me give you let me give you another picture here. So I'm going to try and look at what I said. Just a second. <laughs> I guess we'll watch it animate before our eyes. Okay, I'm going to try to look at what I said. Um, where I said, you know, you take a, a group of size 40, you find out those, uh, the average of those 40, and you mark that down. It's a mean, right? Uh, do it again, and you know, say, say that's 160 pounds. Do it again, and you know, you might get 179 pounds. Uh, do it again, and you might get 172 pounds. Uh, again, and you might get, you know, this is a, a, a all simple random sample possibilities of size 40. Uh, you, you might get 158 pounds. Uh, again, 1, 169, 184. Those themselves are a list of numbers. I know that they're means, but they're a list of numbers. That's that sampling distribution thing we're talking about. In fact, I can show it to you in another way. And this one's going to come right out of that multimedia library page that I said uh, earlier we should be using. So I'll go over here to the sampling distributions. It may take a second to load, but the instructions are up at the top, and <clears throat> if you don't like this version, Rice University on their um, internet statistics page, their, uh, I think it's called the Internet Statistics Textbook uh, from their open statistics material, they have this exact same animation. 
It's actually a little bit easier to use and you don't need Java necessarily. So here's the original population and we can set this to be uniform or, or um, binary. We can make it skewed. It could have been uh, bell-shaped. Now remember if it's bell-shaped that's, uh, that's the primo situation to be in. I'm going to make a custom one and I don't know, I like Batman, so let's see if I can fake. I can't. Uh, forget it. I don't know if you can see where I was going with that, but that's the top half of the Batman symbol. Let's just take it. So this is the uh, pol polygon associated for it. And I'm going to take a uh, sample size. Now we can't do 40, so we can do 30 or 50. Um, I'm trying to make it similar to ours. I'll choose 30. Okay, and um, right now it's, it's taking one item at a time. So we go ahead and sample one item. There's 30, uh, 30, let's say people, 30 people, and their average is right here. So the average of those 30 is 18.2. Let's say it's, it's obviously not body weights because this distribution is not body weights, but do that again. Mark that number. Okay, now we've got two of those. Now again, that, that's that's like that page I was showing you, where you think it's a mean, a mean, a mean, a mean, a mean, and you, they're really just going to be a whole list of means, right? Well, let's take that whole list of means and play it out as far as we can go. And I'm going to make this go a whole lot faster. I'm going to take uh, ten thousand all at once, and there we go. Look at the distribution that was created of the sampling means. Now, I also have medium down here. This is nice to see together because it reminds you that of those that are, if you remember section 6.4, of those that are the target, the population parameter, they're um, uh, unbiased estimators. Median is not included because that's biased. Mean is. Variance is. And so on. We can uh, run more. And you see this distribution turns out to be normal even though the parent population was not normal, then our size is greater than 30. So we're meeting those requirements. And the population mean, which was 21.67, is being targeted by this, the mean of the sampling distribution of sample means. So there it is. So in, imagine in here just x, 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 you know, a bunch of random variables, right? Imagine in here x bar, x bar, x bar, x bar, x bar, right? Because this is not. This is the distribution from the sampling distribution of sample means. Sorry, that's a mouthful. I know, but anyway. Um, and look at the standard deviation there. Actually, I'm going to run that calculation for you. So if I took this standard deviation, 14.0688, and I divide by the square root. Of 30, what's gonna? What, what am I gonna get? 2.56, and so on. So 2.55 right here. And if I run it more, I'm gonna I'm gonna get that same value. That's what we mean when we talk about the conclusion or the uh, central limit theorem and the results from it. From it. One last way to look at this. Okay, if the sample size is greater than or equal to 30, which ours is 40 then it doesn't even matter if the parent population was normally distributed. Let's say it just looks like this. And that is the distribution, like this curve. If we find the distribution of sample means, sampling um, distribution of sample means, and then find its mean right here, it would target the original population mean. And its standard deviation could come about by taking the standard deviation of the original population and divided by the square root of n, whatever sampling size we're using, that's above or equal to 30. If the sample size is less than 30, then we better have a normal distribution, otherwise we're going to have to use non-parametric or bootstrapping methods, and we haven't talked about those yet. So if it's less than 30, then we better have a normally distributed population. And then we'll get that result. Another key thing in summary, before I finally do our calculation, is 
when sampling without replacement, right? So they're not independent. Um, and the sample size n is greater than 5%, the finite population of size n, the, the, pop, the, the population size, right? Not the sample. Um, if, if n, like R40, represents more than 5% of the parent population, then we have to do this adjustment, right? But otherwise, we can assume independence, like we did in, previ in the previous chapter 5, if the sample size n is less than or equal to 5% of the parent population. So we don't need that correction factor. Okay, so let me go all the way back to our problem here. So instead of putting in this and saying that our answer is 61%, I've got to correct that, and it is a drawback here when you compare it to the calculator that I can't just put in something like um, 35.5 divided by square root of 40, which I wish I could. You know, it doesn't it doesn't know how to run the calculation as it's uh, performing the function. The cool thing about the calculator is it can, and I'll show you that just in a sec. So here is um, let me get my number again. I think it was. 35.5, okay. Here's the parent population's standard deviation. I'm going to divide by the square root of 40. Be careful with your parentheses and all that stuff. So I'm going to put in, and by the way, it should make sense. What's the square root of 40? Well, it's, you know, above, it's above 6, okay? And what's 35 divided by 6? It's around 5 something, right? So make sure that you're, you're thinking about that in case you used uh, the order of operations incorrectly in the calculator. And I'm going to try and make this as accurate as I can. So, in fact, I can just control C what's on this screen right now. And I should be able to just control V, paste it in. Yes! And I'll scroll to the beginning of that so you can see. So that's the entire number. Now I'm going to run it, compute. And because this is now taller, because the standard deviation is skinnier, and these are not x's, so even though it says x here on the display, they're x bars, so this is just a whole bunch of x bars. In fact, let me draw that out. Oops, see, I'm sorry about that. So consider this either f of x being the density curve or the probabilities, <coughs> heights, and what we're looking at is the area under the curve. We're looking at 164 and greater, but these are not random variables of men's heights. They're the average of 40 men's heights over and over and over and over and over until you create this entire distribution of sample means. And it's not just in the shaded region. These are sample means also because this is the sampling distribution of sample means. Okay. And so when we make this remark that we're trying to find the probability of the mean of the 40 selected sample of 40 that could be um, loading in this plane being greater than 164, then our percentage turns out to be 96.54. Let me go all the way back to our problem here. And while I don't know exactly where the 8596 came from, oh, you know what? I'm sorry. I think I could try that out really fast. Oh, I did. I, I did treat it as though that was a standard deviation, and I still didn't get that number. Right? I had calculated 61 and something percent. Uh, maybe it was that we transposed these numbers. No. Maybe you transpose the numbers but still did use the uh, correct standard deviation that would be applied by the central limit theorem. So that would um, that be. Sorry. Control C. Control V. Yeah, I don't know. Um, either way. 
Should the pilot take any action to correct the overloaded aircraft? Yes or no? Yes, because the probability is high. The probability, or the, the pilot should take action by somehow reducing the weight of the aircraft. Yes. Hope that helps, and I know it was a long video, just over 20 minutes, but I try to give a kind of a section 6.5 lecture during the process.